Hello friends, it's Vicki and I have my lovely pink cup, which means it is time to do another episode of my 100 Epic Reads project. Um, for those of you that are new here or have never seen any of these videos, this is a project that I have been doing for the last couple of years where I have this, um, this awesome poster called the 100 Epic Reads of a Lifetime and it's a scratch off poster where apparently there's these 100 books that somebody said are epic and should be read by all. I have 29 books left to read on the poster. And it's a cute poster because uh, as you read the books, you scratch them off and it reveals a cute little cover. Um, and so, yeah, I decided a couple years ago to make a whole video series about this. And it's getting down to the wire. I'm starting to get a little nervous uh, about what's left in here because I have, there's a couple that are, a little scary to me. I'm thinking War and Peace. I'm thinking Count of Monte Cristo. Those are big books. Uh, Dickens is on here still. I think um, A Tale of Two Cities, which I've read Dickens in the past. And I don't remember his books being particularly challenging to read, but just the idea. So there's definitely some books left in the cup that I'm a little scared about. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna do another episode here. So the way I do this is I pick two books out of the cup and then from those two picks I decide which one I'm gonna read and then I read it and I vlog about it and yeah it's a great time and then at the end I get to scratch off the poster and reveal the cute little cover so that's what we're gonna do right now so I've got my cup and I'm gonna get two picks the other thing I'm sort of starting to get concerned about is there have been so many that I've rejected that they've got to start coming back soon, I think. So that's also a concern. Okay, so I'm going to do um, a green one. And um, I'm going to do, let me see. I'm going to do a blue one too. So we got green and blue. All right. Put these back. Okay. <sighs> Let's go. So I'm going to do blue first. Blue pick. Here we go. Okay, we have Emma by Jane Austen. Who? Okay, so I have like a, I can't really say this about Jane Austen. I've only read Pride and Prejudice and I didn't love it. And I know that that is not the norm. Most people read Pride and Prejudice and they love it and they love Jane Austen. And I just didn't feel that way. So I've been on the fence about Jane Austen ever since. Uh, and I do sort of know what Emma is about, I think, but I will pull up my, I'll get my phone out and we will pull up the synopsis and read it together, see what it's all about. So Emma was first published in 1815, so she's a bit of an old gal. And this edition uh, on Storygraph is 500 pages, 512. I did not realize that Emma was that long but okay, okay. It has a 3.99 rating, so not terrible. And there have been quite a few people that have reviewed this book, like 61,000 people. So it's a popular book, right? Like I said, Jane Austen is kind of one of those beloved authors that for some reason I just didn't get along with the first time I read her. So this should be interesting, but I haven't picked her yet, but let's read the synopsis and see what we got. It says, um, Although described by Jane Austen as a character whom no one but myself will much like, okay, the irrepressible Emma Woodhouse is one of her most beloved, beloved heroines. Clever, rich, and beautiful, she sees no need for marriage but loves interfering in the romantic lives of others until her matchmaking plans unravel with consequences that she never expected. Jane Austen's novel of youthful exuberance and gradual self-knowledge is a brilliant, sparkling comic masterpiece. And from what I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, the movie Clueless is like a modern adaptation of Emma, correct? Which I think is really fun because I actually like that movie a lot. I'm a 90s kid, of course I like Clueless. So yeah, that would kind of be a fun thing to do is to, to read Emma and then watch Clueless. That could be kind of cool. Um, but... I'm gonna go ahead and see what my other pick is first, and then we'll go from there. All right, here we go. We've got the green, and we have Midnight's Children 
by Salman Rushdie. And I have no idea <laughs> what this book is. I don't think I've ever even heard of it. The author sounds familiar to me, but this book, I, I have absolutely nothing. So let's look it up. Okay, so Midnight's Children was first published in 1981. So a little more modern than uh, Emma. Whew, this edition on Storygraph, it says it's 647 pages. Okay, it only has 6,976 reviews on Storygraph, so I don't know if this is a super popular book. Like I said, I've never heard of it. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, and it has a rating of a, of a 3.86. So people seem to like it, but not a ton of people have seemed to review it compared to Emma. So let's see what it's about. Born at the stroke of midnight, at the precise moment of India's independence, Salim Sinai, I'm, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, I apologize, is destined from birth to be special, for he is one of 1,001 children born in the midnight hour, children who all have special gifts, children with whom Salim is telepathically linked. But there has been a terrible mix-up at birth, and Salim's life takes some unexpected twists and turns. As he grows up amidst a whirlwind of triumphs and disasters, Salim must learn the ominous consequences of his gift, for the course of his life is inseparably linked to that of his motherland, and his every act is mirrored and magnified in the events that shape the newborn nation of India. It is a great gift and a terrible burden. Okay, that does sound sort of intriguing, the whole idea of these people that are born at a specific hour and they're telepathically linked. That is interesting. Who I gotta think about this one because I have literally a book that I have never heard of that is quite lengthy and then a book I have heard of but I haven't loved the author in the past and it's also somewhat lengthy. 500 pages is somewhat lengthy. So yeah I have some thinking to do. I gotta, I gotta think about this. Okay, so I'm sort of letting some reviews be my guide <laughs> with helping me choose. In the first like three reviews that I'm reading on Storygraph, though the book was rated well by these reviewers, the one reviewer said it took them a year and a half to read Midnight's Children. Another person, same thing, one of the most challenging, rewarding reads in a long time. Boy, did this take some time to read. <sighs> I just don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> I do sort of want a book I can just kind of dive into. Uh, is Emma that book? I don't know. But I don't know if Midnight's Children is, I don't know if the timing is right right now. Um, I don't know if I'm in the mood for a book that is going to take me possibly hundreds of pages to even get into, to get invested in. Though I, you know, though I could in the end end up being super in love with the book and thinking it was worth it, I don't, I just, uh, I just don't know if I want to invest my time in that right now. So I can't believe I'm saying this, but Midnight's Children is going to go back in the cup for another day and I am going to try Jane Austen again. Since this is so popular, I think I can get it from the library fairly easily and I think that's the route I'm going to go. What about audio? I wonder if Austin on audio would be nice. I don't know. And you guys can't tell me because you're not going to see this until it's done. <laughs> so I'm going to think on it, but I'm going to do Emma. I'm just not quite sure yet with what format I'm going to go with. So once I figure that out and I start the book, I will let you guys know how it's going. I was trying to listen to the audiobook of Emma and it just wasn't working. I was not like listening to what was going on. I was getting distracted and stuff. So I ran to the library and I picked up a physical copy and I'm going to try doing that. 
because yeah, just going audio alone was was not working. Sorry, the lighting's kind of weird. You guys are sitting in my TV stand, um, in case you didn't know. Um, but I am 67 pages into Emma, and so I thought I'd give sort of my initial thoughts. Uh, and to be honest, I'm not hating it, which is sort of surprising. <laughs> um, though Emma is... I wouldn't say she's unlikable. She's flawed. Um, and I think that at this point in the book anyway, um, her meddling, <laughs> if you want to call it that, is well-intentioned, I think. Um, she just has an interest in setting people up and she thinks that she's good at it, though that's debatable. <laughs> Um, and there's definitely like a little bit of humor, which I was surprised by, which I remember people saying that about Pride and Prejudice and other Jane Austen books that she does bring a humor to things. I just don't remember that in Pride and Prejudice, but I am seeing it in the, you know, initial chapters of this book where there's definitely things going on where Emma is just completely oblivious and you, the reader, can see what she obviously is not seeing, um, which is basically, she's trying to set somebody up with this particular man. And this particular man does not want the girl, woman that Emma's trying to set her up with. He wants Emma. <laughs> and Emma's just not seeing it. So it's sort of funny. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not awful. I'm actually listening to the audiobook as I read it. Because otherwise I don't know how much I would be taking in, if it would be holding my interest or whatever. And the audiobook I chose, because there's a million different audio versions of this book, but I chose the one that's narrated by Juliet Stevenson, I believe it is, uh, because I just listened to a book that she narrated back in January. I read Once Upon a River, and she was the narrator for that, and I really liked her narration. She has an English accent. Um, it's very soft. And sort of delicate um, but she also I think does male voice as well and so it kind of works for this story so I decided to go with that one and I'm enjoying it so far but like I said it's kind of that's kind of what's helping me uh, stay focused is that I'm listening as I sort of read along and yeah I mean you're seeing some similar themes I think that if I remember correctly we're also in Pride and Prejudice like you have the whole um, sort of like where you are in terms of social standing, that that's like super, super important when you're trying to um, find someone to marry. And in Emma's case, she's trying to set people up and that's obviously an important thing to her. And even then, she so sometimes gets it wrong <laughs> and makes assumptions um, about people that are not right um, in terms of social status. And so that's obviously, I think, going to continue to be a theme in here. Um, because Emma comes from a more higher place in society than some of the people that she is um, interacting with. Um, and she's sort of misguided, mis misinformed as to where their standing is. And so that also brings in a little bit of that humor too that I was kind of talking about. So yeah, all in all, I'm very surprised to say that I'm not hating this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to keep reading it. So I'll probably do another check-in when I'm at the halfway point in the book. So I've reached the halfway point of Emma, and I'm still, for the most part, enjoying it. Um, there have been a lot more characters introduced uh, since the last check-in, and for a second I was getting them a little bit mixed up, <laughs> um, but I think I have it somewhat sorted out now. Uh, I guess my biggest sort of question in this one is, does Emma have a love interest? And if so, who is it? Because um, there's like two characters who I sort of have in mind, but I'm not sure if it's actually going to happen because Emma, um, pretty much from the first part of the book, is pretty much anti-marriage for herself. She is not interested in getting married, uh, though she is, you know, interested in matchmaking and getting other people married off. She herself isn't really concerned with it. Which I think is kind of refreshing, especially um, if I'm comparing this to Pride and Prejudice. If I remember correctly, Pride and Prejudice is like that's such a huge 
part of the book and all the characters like motivations is like finding somebody to marry wanting to get married all of that sort of thing and Emma just doesn't care so much about that and it's kind of refreshing to meet a character from this time period who is kind of like I don't really need to get married <laughs> um she's pretty happy where she is um because at home, it's just her and her dad. Her sister is already off and married. So she is like the mistress of the house because her mother um, died when she was young. So she already runs a household and is very happy where she is. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, and like I said before, she's not a perfect person. <laughs> she makes mistakes. She misreads um, people in situations. Uh but at the same time, I wouldn't say she's unlikable um, because I think she's well-intentioned. Uh, so, yeah. And then, like I said, though, there is the possibility of there being a love interest. But I'm not sure if it's going to go that way or not. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with this. Uh, I'm just going to keep reading. And I think the next check-in I do will be when I finish the book. Happy spring, y'all. Happy spring. So I'm filming in my living room because I haven't filmed um, a video in my library in a while because we are actually doing a like home improvement project. And so, there's a bunch of stuff in my in my reading room, which is fine because we're updating our uh, one bathroom and it's gonna look awesome when it's done. Like we got a new cabinet, a new countertop, um, and it just totally changes the whole look um, of the bathroom. So uh, I like it and all, but I haven't really been able to film that room because we have a bunch of stuff in there. So anyway, you probably don't care about that, but <laughs> I felt like I needed to explain why lately I have not been filming um, very much in my reading room. So that's why. And what I really came to tell you is that I finished Emma and I actually liked it, you guys. I'm surprised that I enjoyed this. I actually enjoyed it more than Pride and Prejudice, which I know is not the norm. I think most people that I've talked to who have read multiple Jane Austen books usually say that Pride and Prejudice is their favorite. And it also kind of makes me think that maybe I should give Pride and Prejudice another shot, give it a reread and see if I've changed my mind about it because it has been probably at least a decade since I first read that book. And so maybe my mind will change because this one I did enjoy. Uh, I think Emma was an interesting character because she was the type of character that I think her flaws were sort of in the forefront. And that was kind of the point of the book was that you have these people and a main character that aren't always on the same page, um, even though they could be all experiencing the same thing, like for example, be at a party or something and the way that one person perceives something versus the way another person perceives it can be completely different. People can misread people, misread situations, and that happened in this book um, because Emma uh, thought she knew who belonged together um, based on, you know, societal standards and like vibes that she apparently was picking up on that were clearly wrong. <laughs> um, and yeah, things usually did not turn out or were not the way that they seemed at first. Um, so I thought it was kind of interesting and I didn't mind it. I liked, like I said, Emma was a character I think you, you like but then there are parts of her that you kind of see as could be, you know, flaws. Um, she can be sort of selfish. She can be, um, what's the word? She can just like misread people, but it can cause issues. <laughs> um, and sometimes she's a little judgmental of others, but you don't hate her, I guess. So uh, the only thing I want to say 
um, before I tell you the rating of the book is that what I want to say has to do with the ending and it's a spoiler. So if you don't want to be spoiled for Emma, fast forward, I'll like put a little timestamp um, so that you know where to go if you don't want to be spoiled for Emma. So the thing about this that I was a little disappointed by was that in the end, Emma gets married. She discovers or realizes that she loves Mr. Knightley. And he was one of the people in the book that I thought if Emma's gonna have a love interest, it might be him. And it was. But I was a little, I think it would have been a more interesting story if Emma didn't get married. If she did intend to, you know, like her intention in the beginning was always like, oh, I'm never gonna get married. I'm gonna just stay here with my dad and like run this house and it's fine. Um, you know, I was kind of hoping we'd get like a Joe March, <laughs> Lori situation. Uh, because it's just more interesting. It's not as predictable, but obviously we didn't get that here. She just realizes, oh my gosh, I love Mr. Knightley. And then he's like, oh my gosh, I love you too. Or actually he kind of confesses his love to her and then she's like, oh my gosh, I love you too. And then they get married. Um, and so I just think it would have been a little more interesting if that didn't happen. Uh, and also Mr. Knightley as a love interest, there was a, it felt a little icky to me because like at one point after they get engaged, um, they're talking about how he's known her since she was like a little girl and he's older than her. Um, and he's been around her family because his brother's married to her sister. So it was a little icky when he was just like, oh, like talking about her as a little girl. And then it's like, and now you're marrying her. And then like, he says something to her, like, you always call me Mr. Knightley. Like, are you going to ever call me George? And she's like, oh, I'll call you George on our wedding day. But otherwise she's going to keep calling him Mr. Knightley. And I'm just like, that's kind of weird. So yeah, there, there were parts about that relationship that I didn't love, but um, otherwise, now that I'm talking, done talking about spoilers, uh, I decided to give this a three star um, because like I said, it wasn't terrible. I enjoyed it, but I did have some issues with the way the book ended that I just talked about in the spoiler part. So um, I won't get into it here, but yeah, that did affect my rating, I think overall, but it definitely has made me think that I need to reconsider Jane Austen. I actually have Persuasion on my TBR shelf. I bought from a library book sale um, thinking I would give her another try. And so I think I'll try that one. Uh, I have no idea what it's about. So let me know if you've read Persuasion, if you think it's any good. Um, and like I said, I may in the future give Pride and Prejudice another shot and see if I change my mind about it. But yeah. I'm glad I read this actually. <laughs> and it's a good classic to sort of knock off. And I have now scratched off another book off the poster. So that's also exciting. So yes, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and hopefully I will be back sometime in the spring, maybe early summer, depending on what my next pick is for this series. Cause if it's a big one, it might take me a while. So it all depends on what book I pick, but hopefully I will be back in the next couple of months with another 100 Epic Reads series or episode for you. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will chat with you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.